On a new Stepcraft CNC, there are three files that are included uh, for samples. And what these are for is we want to make sure that once you set up your CNC machine that you can run a test file and make sure everything is adjusted properly and is working as you would expect it to be. Now, the three files that we're giving you are a sample G-code file, which we are actually going to create today in this video. Uh, we're going to give you this file that we're creating, the Vetric file, which is the CRV file. And we're also going to give you the Stepcraft logo in a DXF file. So if you want, you can simply just run the G-code file that's, uh, that's included and do your test with that. But it's important that we have a video that shows you how to actually take the DXF file and to create that G-code file because using your Stepcraft CNC machine is going to uh, require you to be designing things and outputting G-code files. So if you're in a real hurry, you can run the G-code file that we include. If you want to learn how we create that file, then this video is for you. So the first thing we're going to do here, we're using Vetric Cut2D Desktop. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're using a Cut2D Desktop or Pro, VCarve Desktop or Pro, or Aspire. Uh, the functionality we're going to show you is the same in all of the software platforms. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new file. Now, the Stepcraft logo sample file that we're going to make here is uh, actually 6 inches by 6 inches square. And uh, we have set it up for a quarter inch piece of material. Now, it's important to mention that the file itself that we're going to cut is six inches by six inches. Now, this doesn't mean that this is the actual work piece size that you put on your machine. What I recommend is that you cut a piece of material that's at least two inches larger all the way around uh, to, to put on so you have room to clamp that stock down. Uh, if you try to put a six inch by six inch piece on there, the only it, the the clamps you have no room to clamp it, and uh, the tool will end up hitting a clamp. And even if you use double sided tape, uh, that would mean that you're going to be cutting all the way to the edge of the material. So I recommend putting a piece of material down that's at least eight by eight inches. Um, we have set the thickness to a quarter inch. It doesn't really matter too much for this sample file because we're only going to go down an eighth of an inch. So what's important is to make sure that you put a piece of material on your step craft that is uh, greater than one eighth of an inch uh, thick. So typical plywood that you would buy from Home Depot or Lowe's or something is going to be roughly a quarter inch. It may be a little smaller, it might be a little thicker. Uh, but some scrap wood is really all you need. Even if you have a half inch or a three quarter inch piece, that'll work perfectly fine for this particular uh, demo and to do this test. So again, for here, we're setting this at 0.25 inches or quarter inch. Uh, we are going to be working in inches. You could work in millimeters. There's no problem there, whatever your preference is. Z0 position. So what this refers to is where you bring your tool down and zero the tip of the tool. You have to tell the software what your preference is here. Uh, you could either zero the tool on the top of the workpiece or you can zero the tool on the bed of the machine. Now the most common that we use and we teach is to uh, zero off at the top of the material work surface. So that's what we're going to do here. So you'll actually bring your tool down manually uh, using UCCNC until the tip of the tool just touches the surface of the material and then you're going to zero your Z position and you'll be all set. Now XY datum position, this refers to where you're going to move your tool along the X axis or left to right or the Y axis or front to back and to establish a zero position for each of those axes. Now, in this particular file for, for a sample, what we're going to do is we're actually going to set it for the middle. So we want to have, we want to put our tool in exactly in the middle of this six by six inch uh, area. So again, if you're using an eight by eight inch piece of, of wood, you can simply measure in four inches from the left, four inches down and make a mark. And that's where you'll locate your tool when you start the job. And that's where you'll zero your X and Y datum position. You'll also notice here in the center of the screen that that red square 
is in the middle, and that denotes where your XY datum is. So you can see if I move it to the lower left corner, it goes down here. Now this is really important to note because if you don't set this properly, and say you set it down, you, you zero your tool in the lower left corner, uh, then what's gonna happen is your, your job is actually gonna run outside of the limits, and you'll probably get an, an outside limits error on your machine. So it's very, very important uh, that what you set up here in the job setup screen, uh, that you set up properly when you actually put a piece of material on your, your CNC machine, and uh, that you, you know what your X, Y, zero is, and you know what your zero, uh, Z, zero position is. So once we do that, we're just gonna click OK. And we're gonna load the uh, StepCraft logo DXF file. There's two ways to do it. You can click on this icon right here, which says import vectors, or you can do file, import, and then import vectors here. So there's, there's two ways of, of getting to this point. You can also hit the control key and I, which will load up a window to uh, import the vector file. Now I've created a folder on my desktop called sample file. And this is the logo file that you'll see uh, when you get your machine. It's the, called stepcraft-logo. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna double click that and you'll see that it, it imported the DXF file. Now you know that this is a vector file because you can see these purple dashed lines. Uh, what's interesting about this is that it positioned the uh, file off the work area. And this that's okay, sometimes that happens. It all depends on where you set your um, XY zero reference. So while this is all highlighted, uh, purple and, and dashed, we're going to uh, center that on the workpiece. Now, if you accidentally click off, you'll see that the uh, the, the vector file here uh, turns black. And you'll wanna make sure that you go outside the uh, vector file and hold your left mouse button down and just drag a square or rectangle around it and you'll see everything will highlight. So you wanna make sure you're in this state. And what you're gonna do is come over here to this Align Selected Objects button and you're gonna select this center where it says align to material. And this would be left to right, this would be up and down, this would be to center on the material. And when we click that, you'll see how everything now is centered in the six by six uh, space that we allocated here. So we're gonna click close. Now, for this particular job, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a, a pocketing toolpath which is basically going to remove the material between the outside vectors of the logo and the rectangle or the square, I'm sorry, that's on the outside here. So we're not going to remove the material inside the logo here. We're going to remove the uh, material on the outside this way. So what we need to do is we are going to switch over to our toolpaths tab. And you'll notice on, on Vetric that the screen is basically set up to, to, in two sections. There's the left side, which is essentially your drawing tab. This is where you'll do any of your designs to get your files in. You'll make your vector modifications. Uh, you can import DXF files, or you can design something from scratch using all of the different Create Vector tools. On the right-hand side of the screen is your CAM uh, feature. So you're, when you hit the Toolpaths tab, you'll notice that uh, there's a little pin icon here. I like to push that. If you don't do that, then every time you move your mouse away, you'll see that that whole side disappears. So we wanna hit the tool pass and we wanna pin that so that it stays on the screen. Now, you can see here that there's a couple different tool path operations. You've got a profile, a pocket, there's drilling, engraving, in, and an inlay tool path. In this particular case, what we're concerned about is we're gonna be using the pocket toolpath. But before we do that, we're gonna look at our material setup here. And we just wanna double check this again, that we've, we've indicated that we're using a piece of material that's a quarter inch thick, that our X, Y, zero position is in the center of the uh, material, the center of the project, that we are zeroing our tool off the surface of the material 
And right here, rapid Z gaps above material. We want to make sure that when the tool is not cutting and it moves across our material, that there's a little bit of a gap so that if you had a clamp or if you had a screw or, or something that was holding the material down, we want to make sure that the bit is going to pass over the material and not interfere. So while you're learning, it might be a good idea to set the, the clearance um, and the plunge to uh, up three quarters of an inch. That way, if you are using the included step craft clamps to hold the material down, that you have uh, enough Z height so that you won't crash your bit into the, uh, into the clamps. And then we're going to click OK. And now what we're going to do, now that everything is still selected, again, if, if you see that your lines on the screen are black, no problem. Just go up here to the upper left corner and drag to the lower right corner, and you'll notice that everything turns purple and dashed lines. Then you'll come over here and click on Pocket Toolpath. Okay, so now what we're going to do here is we are, I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through these settings here. Cutting depth, this is where we're starting. And we're going to actually start so that we're from the very top surface of the material. So zero inches is where we want to be. That'll be the top surface of the material as it sits on your machine. Now, the cutting depth, again, we're using a quarter inch piece of material. I said we were going to go down an eighth of an inch. So again, you want to make sure that your material is more than one eighth of an inch thick. Uh, so in this case, we're going to type in 0.125 inches, which is an eighth of an inch. And sometimes you may, when you run the program, you may have show advanced toolpath options may not be checked, and sometimes it is. I like to teach people to keep this checked because there's a couple extra things here. You may not need them right now, but I'll, I'll quickly explain what they are. Uh, the first thing we have to do is choose our tool from the tool library. So if you go to select here, you'll notice that this is a, a new installation, so there's not a lot. Uh, installed here and this is actually good because I'll show you how to set up a tool right now under Imperial tools uh, there's two end mills set up there's a quarter inch and there's a half inch tool now in this case we're gonna talk about using an eighth inch tool because if if all you're using is say a Dremel or something that doesn't have quarter inch capability for your spindle then we want to make sure that this video takes care of everybody now, if you have a Cress or an HF spindle or a DeWalt spindle, you can put an eighth inch collet on and you can use an eighth inch end mill or you can use a quarter inch end mill that's tapered down to an eighth inch. So there's a lot of options there. So what we're going to do here is uh, the easiest way to create a, a new tool is to highlight one of the end mills and click copy. And you'll see now that I have a, a copy of that tool. So we're going to go up here to the name and we're just going to add a one in front of the two fives. So now it's an end mill that's an eighth of an inch. That's the name that we're giving it. And over here, the diameter, which you can see indicated by this drawing, is saying that the tool is a quarter inch. So again, we want to change that to an eighth of an inch. Now, our pass depth is how, many, how much material are we taking off per pass? Uh, so, for instance, if you're going to cut, uh, say, a half inch deep, you, you can't do a half inch pass, a half inch deep cut in one pass. So you're going to split that into smaller uh, passes so that you don't overload the the bits cutting capability. So my rule of thumb for anybody that's just starting is to make this number half of the diameter of the tool. Now, that'll vary from different materials. Obviously, if you're cutting foam or really soft wood, you could go a little deeper for a pass. But if you're doing hardwood or metals like aluminum, you're going to have to go less per pass. So in this case, uh, what we're going to do, just as a rule of thumb, is we're going to set it to 0 0.625, which is 1 16th of an inch or 1 half of the diameter. Uh, the step over in this case... Now, what step over means is think of it as like when you're mowing your lawn where you're you you make one pass and then you on your way back, you slightly overlap your previous pass so that you don't end up with a strip of grass that's uncut. Well, in this case, 
Uh, 40% is an average step over that we use. So, so you're, uh, you're, you're sure that you're overlapping 40% of your previous path. Now you can speed up your job by making this number greater, but I like to always keep it a little less than half the diameter of the bit. So 40% is, is my rule of thumb for how I, I like to set this up. So the, again, these are just uh, starting points for this particular sample file. As you progress and learn more with your CNC, you're going to be able to adjust these things accordingly to, to you, suit your needs and, and uh, to create the speeds um, that you're looking for and the finished results you're looking for. Uh, it is important to note that the lower the percentage of the step over, the better the quality of the bottom finish is going to be in your pocket because you're uh, making more passes and it's going to give you a smoother finish with less potential to have uh, tool mark lines. Your spindle speed here, if you have an HF or computer controlled spindle, uh, then you can use this RPM setting and that'll set the RPMs for what you uh, what your spindle is going to run at. If you're using a man manual spindle such as a Cress or a Dremel or DeWalt, then it doesn't matter what you put here because that number is not transferred to the spindle. Uh, however, if you are using a computer controlled spindle, we're going to set this at 16,000 RPM. Again, if you're using a Cress, it won't matter. But for the purpose of this video, I'm, I'm going to put 16,000 in there. Now, our machines, the Stepcraft desktop series machines, uh, have a maximum speed of 50 millimeters per second. Now, since we know that that's the maximum speed, when I teach people how to use the machine, I, I like to get them used to using millimeters per second for uh, setting your feed and your plunge rates. Because that, that's telling me that if this number here is at 50, I'm moving that bit through the material at the maximum speed that the machine is capable of. But if I put it at 25, now I know I'm running half the speed. Now again, a rule of thumb for most woods, uh, say softwoods, plywoods, MDF, uh, is to set the um, feed rate at between 20 and 25%. So no more than half of the maximum speed of the machine. Uh, depending on the, the bit you're using, if you went down to say a 16th of an inch bit, you may have to... Uh, and make that a little slower because you don't want to break the bit. Uh, sometimes when you go to a larger bit, like a quarter inch, you can move it a little bit faster. Uh, but just for a good rule of thumb for this particular setup on, on this file, we're going to run this at 20 millimeters a second. Now the plunge rate is how fast the bit enters the material vertically, like a drill press. How, how fast does that bit come down? Uh, usually my rule of thumb is to set this at half the feed rate. So 10. Uh, again, these are things that you're going to play with as time goes on with different projects and different materials. But for the purpose, again, of this demo, uh, I'm going to assume you're using uh, either a piece of plywood or some pine, some sort of a non-hard metal uh, uh, wood. You want to use a, some sort of a, a soft wood or a plywood or an MDF, and these settings will work perfectly for that. The tool number setting uh, doesn't really apply here. It only applies if you're using an automatic tool changer. So in this case, we could just leave this set to one. And then I click OK. And now I can see that my end mill chosen is an eighth of an inch. And if I wanted to go in and make changes to that, to the speeds or feeds, I can just hit the edit button and it brings this same window back up and I can make changes for that tool. Now, because we're going to go down an eighth of an inch and we set the uh, pass depth at a sixteenth of an inch. This is telling me that it's going to take two passes to pocket out this material. Again, for the purpose of this demo, this isn't about speed. It's not about production speed. It's certainly not about the maximum capability um, of the machine. It's just about making sure that your machine is set up and that we can get a successful first file run through and cut properly so you know everything is good so you could start progressing in your CNC journey. Now the next box is to use a larger clearance tool. This um, We're not going to talk about this too much but basically what this means is since we're using an eighth of an inch end mill uh, depending on the type of project you're using say you're using a project that has really tight inside corners you may want to use a smaller end mill to be able to get into that corner tighter. Um, but if it's a big project, 
you using that smaller end mill is going to take a lot longer to to remove the material because the diameter is smaller. So you have the ability here to use a larger area clearance tool. So maybe I could put a quarter inch bit in here. And when it comes through all this white area on the outside of the logo, it's going to remove it much faster because the diameter of the bit is larger. Then you would do a tool change back to this 1 8 inch bit and you would go in and it would do the uh, areas that are, are left. Uh, but for the purpose of this demo, we're not going to use a larger area clearance tool. Now, there's two different uh, profiles here for, for pot clearing the pocket. You've got an offset, which basically starts in the center. And the tool is going to go in kind of a circular pattern, and it's it's going to work its way out uh, in a circular pattern to to remove the material. the uh, The other way to do it is in a raster pattern, which again is kind of like mowing your lawn. It, the bit's going to go back and forth, back and forth, um, slightly overlapping each time until it finishes the job. There. There are some advantages or disadvantages to using either one. If I was uh, doing a part here that was round, more round, then I would want to use this offset uh, pattern because it's more efficient. Uh, in this case, this is a square uh, logo. You could use either, um, but we're going to use raster just, just for this purpose. The cut direction refers to what which way the cutter is moving through the material. Now, the cutter is always spinning in a clockwise fashion. So when we're doing climb milling, the cutter is spinning clockwise, but we're and we're moving the bit in a clockwise direction. Then that's called climb milling. Conventional milling is that, again, the bit is spinning clockwise, but we're moving it in the opposite direction that it spins. I'm not really gonna get into the reasons why you'd use one or the other. In this particular case, it doesn't matter which one you use. Um, some jobs, some bits, some materials are gonna give you a better finish in climb than they will conventional, and others will be the reverse of that. Uh, so in this case, we're gonna use uh, conventional. Now, when you're using um, raster, you can also choose your raster angle. So right now, it's at zero degrees, which means it's going to go back and forth along the x-axis. If I wanted to change this to 90 degrees, then what's going to happen is it's going to go back and forth along the y-axis. So it's basically going to go up and down like this. Again, it won't make any difference because this logo is pretty symmetrical and the overall uh, shape of this is um, square. Now, where this is important is if you're cutting a job on wood that has a grain, now, in this case, we're going to be doing it with plywood. So plywood doesn't matter because the grain on the first layer is going to be the opposite direction as the grain underneath it, and they, they, the grain is going to, um, going to switch back and forth uh, for each layer of material in the plywood. But if you were doing a piece of pine and the grain was going up and down here, then you may want to cut uh, across the grain, or you may want to cut with the grain. So it just depends on the tool that you're using. Uh, so you have the ability to adjust that here so you can work with the grain or against it. Um, the last setting here is uh, your profile pass. Now what's going to happen is when you're cutting with a round bit and you're telling it to do a raster, it's going to go back and forth. Now because the bit is round, what's actually going to happen, and I'm going to just draw something here to show you. I'm going to exaggerate this with a quarter inch diameter circle. And um, I'll show you here. We'll bring this over to the edge like this. And then we're going to copy it. And we're going to move it down. Now, if you look here, this represents the tool. So the, the end mill is coming over to the side until the edge of the end mill hits this outside vector. And then it's going to go back. And then it's going to come down again on the next row, and it's going to hit the vector, and then it's going to go back. And what happens is this scalloped area right here is not actually getting cut because you've got a round bit going against a straight edge. So it's only natural in geometry that you're going to have this area right here that will not be cut. So in order to remove this material, we do a profile pass. And what that means basically is that the tool, after it's done going back and forth, will actually go vertically uh, along the perimeter of the, the job. 
So it'll go along the outside edge and it'll go along the perimeter of each of these vectors on the inside edge. So it removes those scallops and you end up with a nice clean uh, overall cut. So the, it's whether or not you want to do no profile pass, which in this case you do want one, and it's just a matter of choosing whether you want to do it first or last. Now, if you do it first, that means the bit is going to be going through the material that has not been cut yet. So there's going to be a higher load on the bit if you do a uh, profile pass first. So I tend to do my profile pass last. Uh, that way, all I'm cutting is the little scalloped areas. I'm not, I've already removed the bulk of the material. So it's a lot less strain on the machine and on, on your tool. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is just quickly delete these two circles. Um, pocket allowance we won't talk about right now. That's just uh, it, it giving you a little bit of an allowance. So if you wanted to cut outside the line or stay inside the line a little you can use a negative or positive number here to offset your pocket ramp plunge moves this what this means is that an end mill is not a drill uh, most end mills are flat on the bottom and they're not meant to really plunge straight down into material like you would with a drill press the cutting edge on an end mill is actually the corner uh, and that's where you want to enter your material so if you were doing a harder material, you want to enter it at an angle. So you want to start and then slowly ramp the Z-axis down as you're moving the bit laterally until you enter the material. So if you want to create a ramp uh, for your job, you can click on ramp plunge moves and you can set a distance. So that means that it, over this distance, it's going to go from above the material to your set depth. Um, for, for your pass. So for, for instance, in this case, it would go from three quarters of an inch, which is what we said we wanted our safe Z to be. So three quarters of an inch above the material down to one sixteenth of an inch into the material because we've set our, our passes to one sixteenth per pass. And it'll do that over a period of one inch or two, three, four inches, whatever you want to set for that. Uh, so in this case, we're just going to do ramp plunge move and we're going to leave it at one inch. Now, the last thing here is that we want to give this a name. Uh, so in this case, we, we, we could just call it, leave it at the default pocket one because we're not going to have another tool path. If we were to have multiple tool paths, so maybe we did a pocket, then we did an engraving, then we went and cut this piece out um, from the, the work piece that you've got mounted on your CNC, then we might want to call this a pocketing toolpath, and then the next one might be engraving toolpath, and then the last one might be profile cutout. So when we're all done with all this, we're just going to hit calculate. And we got an error, no suitable vectors selected, at least one vector must be selected for this operation. Again, that's because all of these are black. I have not uh, highlighted them, so I'm just going to highlight them all again. And you see where they're all now dashed in purple. So I'm going to click calculate. And what you can see here, this is a cool thing about Vectric software, is their uh, 3D uh, previewing that you can do. So all these blue lines represent movements of the tool, uh, where the tool is engaged in the material. So everywhere you see a blue line here, that means that the bit is in the material, and it's moving back and forth. And then you can see how the lines are a little thicker in some spaces. That's because there's a profile tool path that goes around afterwards. The red lines you see here are rapids. So that's when the tool is moving above the material, but not actually cutting. So in this case, you could see where, you know, it would finish here and then it, it, move, it comes up out of the material, goes over here. And you, you've got some different uh, positions for where that tool is moving above the material. So what we could do here now, if we want to see what this is going to look like, we can just click Preview Selected Toolpath. This, this pocket toolpath is selected. We'll click Preview Selected Toolpath. And now if I left-click my mouse and hold it down and then drag my, my mouse on, you could see how I've created... Uh, a preview and I can actually look at this project now and I can see that we've removed the material on the outside and we've left the Stepcraft logo raised on here. Now 
if you want to look at that again and you want to see what the tool is actually going to do, you can click Reset Preview and then come over here to the speed and lower the speed down. Now we'll do Preview Selected Tool Path again and now you can see that it's got a, a, a animation of what the tool is doing and you can see this is the exact um, uh, path that the tool will take when it's in your machine. All right, so this is kind of a neat way to, to look at it to see exactly what you're going to expect when the job is running. And uh, you'll see that it's going to go through. And it's, again, we're moving in that uh, along the x-axis as we cut this. Now, you'll notice here that see the jagged edges around the outside edge? That's because the tool, again, is not uh, cutting all the way. Now it's doing a profile pass to clean all of that up. Now it's going to go and do the second pass. So it did the first sixteenth of an inch. Now it's removing the second sixteenth of an inch. And then it's going to follow up by doing that same uh, profile around each edge. So we're just going to raise the speed up all the way to finish that. And again, there's your finished tool path. Now, one thing that's important here is if something does not look right on this 3D preview, it will not look right when you cut it on the machine. The accuracy to Vetrix 3D Preview compared to what the machine will actually do is, I want to say, 95% or better. Uh, so this fact that they have this 3D Preview is one of the reasons why I like their software so much, especially for beginners, because you can play with a lot of different jobs and you can design things and you can set them up. And you can do that all without actually using the CNC machine. So a lot of our customers that are waiting for their machine to be delivered will go to Vetrix website and download a demo copy of the software so you can start playing with it and learn it. And because the preview is so accurate, you're able to actually use the preview and, and get a feel for what your job is going to look like. So once you have your CNC machine, you output the file and then you actually cut it on a piece of material. So the last step here that we have to do is we got to... Uh, check this pocket toolpath, and again, you'll see all of the blue lines and red lines come back up. Uh, essentially, if you rotate this job, when I when I mentioned the red lines were your rapids above the material, and remember we set the safe Z height to three quarters of an inch above the material. Well, if you look at it from this angle, you can see that the red lines are three quarter inch above the material and that's where the rapids work and then you've got this blue line which is where the machine where the tool enters the material and because you did a one inch ramp you'll notice the the blue line here has a slight angle to it so it's coming down and then it's it's entering the material at this um, along a, a line of one inch until it gets to the required depth so really cool really cool way to Look at your job and really understand what the machine's going to be doing uh, before you actually cut and, and start making uh, sawdust on your machine. So what we need to do is, again, now that we've checked that, we need to create the G-code file. And what we're going to do is click Close here. And we're going to look for this Save Toolpath icon. And we're going to click on that. And you've got a checkbox here that says Output All Visible Toolpaths into One File. Now, if you are doing a job that's using the same tool and you have maybe you're making some holes or you're doing some uh, profile cutting, but you're using the same tool, you can click this box and it'll take all your tool paths and put them into one file. So you don't have to load three separate files if you have the same tool. If you're using a different tool for each, you're going to get an error here when you check this box because... Uh, it, unless you're using an automatic tool changer, um, the software is going to require that you stop the job and change the tool manually before you run the next job. So that, that's really what that means. Now what we need to do is, is, and this is really important, we need to choose a post-processor. Now we have another uh, video that I've created that uh, talks about setting up your uh, favorites in terms of post-processor. Because you have, if you have a Stepcraft machine, then um, you'll look in this list and you'll notice there's a lot of different types of CNC machines here that come default uh, from Vetric. So you're only going to be concerned about the, uh, the Stepcraft uh, machine. 
and um, you'll see right here that we have a few StepCraft post processors that are available. Um, what we're going to be concerned about for the purpose of this video is the StepCraft UCCNC ARCS millimeters.txt file. There's for some reason they've they've have a duplicate and really the only difference is is it looks like the space between the parentheses and the s um so for some reason they, they have a duplicate there but both of these are identical the other uh profile post processor profile is uh the atc which is the automatic tool changer so if your stepcraft machine has an automatic tool changer then you would want to choose the uh atc arcs but in this case, we're going to assume you don't have one. And even if you do have one for your very first cut job, it doesn't matter. You can use this ARCS and it'll work perfectly fine. So we're going to click that. And then we're going to click Save Toolpath. Make sure Output Direct to Machine is not checked we, we, because we, we are not outputting directly from Vetric into the machine. We're going to save this as a file and then load it into UCCNC. So we're going to click Save Toolpath. And we're going to save this in the sample file folder that I've created. So we're going to call this stepcraft-logo. And now I've got a G-code file. And it's important to, to note, too, that that file is going to have a .txt extension. And that's the file that you're going to load into UCCNC. You, very important to make sure you don't load the Vetric file into UCCNC because it will give you an error and there'll be like a bunch of funny characters uh, on there. So you, you always want to make sure that you're loading the G code file into UCCNC. So that's it. This video has now showed you exactly how to take the StepCraft logo, how to create the G code file. I tried to explain a little bit about some tool pathing and, and basic strategies. And uh, again, if you wanted to use the G code file that we include, it is exactly the same as what we just set up in this video. So, uh, you know, you may be in a rush and all excited and want to get your machine up and running so you, you can use the, the uh, provided G-code file. But after that's cut, you may want to know, oh, geez, how do we actually make that file? This video is now uh, is, is here to show you that. If you have any questions, you can always contact us at stepcraft.us. Uh, or you can email us at support at stepcraft.us or call us at 203-556-1856 and uh, press the extension for support. Thank you.